Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm really glad you could be here. So look, we deal a lot with home-based businesses, and a lot of people are asking, you know, what should they be doing with a home-based business to be able uh, to make sure that you have the most success? And one of the things that's interesting actually has to do with your home itself, and it has to do with what you're doing and how you're caring for the outside of your house, because that alone can give you an environment that's more conducive to running a home office and saving a ton on utilities, amongst other things that can help you run a more successful business. So with us today is Stephen Glaze. Now, he's an expert in the exterior home remodeling industry and specializes in siding and gutter protection systems as well. He's started in the business working as an assistant at his father's roofing company at the age of 16 and was estimating projects and managing crews by the time he was 18 years old. Now, today, Steve serves as vice president of sales for Smart Exteriors LLC, an award-winning home improvement company serving the greater Kansas City metro area. Steven works tirelessly to find the best exterior products and to educate homeowners on the best options for their goals and budget. In fact, he recently wrote a homeowner's guide for siting that is now available on Amazon. So, Stephen, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So you've been doing this for a long time. So it's interesting. I'm interested to know, especially with COVID, right, and the price of lumber and everything being so high, like what are some of the changes you've seen um, with home improvement generally over the years? Well, over the years, it, it, it's, it's changed quite a bit, um, you know, from used to be, I think vinyl siding was kind of the, when the big thing, when people were replacing the rotten wood siding and, um, that was, at least in our market, that was kind of the biggest um, product that they would go to. Whereas now it seems to be more of a, people are wanting a hardboard siding, like a LP smart siding or a James Hardy fiber cement siding, uh, something along those lines. And so that, that was kind of one change. And then, um, you know, just with the products, I think, you know, composite materials like decking um composite windows you know it used to be either a vinyl window or a wood window and now you're getting kind of hybrids where you've got uh, a wood window that's clad with vinyl on the outside or aluminum or you've got a fiberglass you know that um all the way through and so just i think the people are looking for long lasting low maintenance beautiful products and and technology is getting us there we're, we're actually uh, finding ways to make things look authentic and real but be of uh, materials that will last forever and require very little to no maintenance so how are how has that changed in your industry like what have you seen happen in the home improvement remodeling exterior uh, you know industry in general like what has the technology and these advancements really done for you how have you guys had to pivot through time I think that just education, I think that's the biggest thing is the, the customers um, are a much more educated customer um, over the last, you know, 20 years. Um, there's so much research that can be done online. And so you have to really be on top of your game and you have to know your stuff and you have to know what else is out there because you're going to get hit with it. You're going to walk into a, a home and they're going to ask you, you know, what about, you know, this composite siding that I've heard about, you know, and if you don't know anything about it, you're probably not going to make the sale. Um, so I think one of the things that we do and me personally, I enjoy is, is really always staying on top of the newest and, and latest technologies and products that come out. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you want to jump on board right away, you know, because a lot of them have great ideas, but then logistically, it just doesn't work well. Um, but at least you're aware of it. And you kind of watch the maturation of of that product and the the distributors and, and things like that and then as it you know matures and it's ready then you, you jump on board interesting what about with covid what have you seen happen in your industry with covid i think a lot of us are interested in that because you know everybody's doing home improvement projects the prices of materials have skyrocketed um, it's why I think building isn't as popular right now as well you know buying homes is through the roof so what what, what are you seeing change in your world as a result well, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It, it, it's um, super, super busy. So I'll I go back to is a little over a year ago from where we're at today. We're in, um, you know, I mean, we were just getting ready to start a, a large siding project, and I remember we got the like came on the news that like the governor mayor was like, we're gonna shut down for two weeks to just two weeks to flatten the curve, right? And then uh, we, you know, so we weren't sure how long it was gonna last, but. Um, we found out that as, as construction industry, we were um, essential and that our suppliers were going to stay open. And so we, we made the decision to just 
let's just go with it and see where it goes. And so we stayed open and we did that job and it, we just got busier and busier, more calls. And um, it was kind of a crazy thing. So we had one of our best years last year and we're on pace now to do even better this year than we did last year. Um, prices have gone through the roof um, for all of these different you know, materials. It's hard to get materials with windows and certain products are just very, very hard to get. Um, so I'm not sure what's driving it. I mean, originally it's like, you know, I guess everybody's just home and they have time to look at it and deal with it. And so now they decide let's, let's make it happen. I understand a little bit more on like the inside, like people are, you know, we're working out at home. So we need a gym. We're doing, uh, you know, working from home. We need to make that office where we need it or we're you know entertaining at home so we need entertainment space so all of that really i think was driven by covid but uh some of the exterior stuff i'm not sure what's driving all of it um but it's it's definitely a hot market right now that's for sure and um it would it's kind of a perfect uh, you know a, t a tough thing because the market's really really hot the demand's really really high but it's so hard to get materials and everything's so expensive right now and so it, it's kind of a, a unique unique t unique time in the industry yeah it is and i like it, hearing about what you guys are doing to pivot i think it helps a lot of us figure those things out what do you think a lot of us run home base home home offices including myself and some of the considerations are I had to put like an air conditioning unit here because I have a studio and so many lights and things. What are some things that you're seeing of people, especially that have home-based offices, some things they should be doing on the interior, exterior um, to just make sure that they're generally maintaining the home where it could be efficient for them with utilities and to be able to, you know, successfully run a business from home. Cause we both know a lot more people are doing that now mm -hmm. with COVID. Yeah. You know, we don't get, uh, we don't do a lot really on the inside, um, you know, so in terms of, of like home office space, but for, um, you know, energy efficiency and things like that, I mean, you're obviously talking about windows um, as a big deal. If you've got old drafty windows for both a couple of reasons, one, um, it can be, you know, if you get a good window, it can help the noise cancellation. So you're working from home and you don't want to hear that dog barking, you know, your neighbor's dog barking outside there, there's windows that can help with that. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing that we're doing a lot of now is when we replace the siding, we're putting insulation. So you got your house wrap and moisture bear and we're putting a foam insulation to add energy efficiency there as well. Um, and that helps, you know, whether you're living in your home, working in your home, but also with the noise, I think is, is a big thing. Um, so in terms of just working from home, those would be the things that I would see that uh, people are people are doing other than, you know, the obvious of just, you know, re, uh, re, repurposing space to make for make room for an office. What about, you know, uh, exterior materials? Is that really based on climate? Because like living in Florida, we're all stucco down here, right? And then, mm -hmm. you know, living up north where I'm from in the Midwest, it's all brick, it's all siding. Uh, you know, in Arizona, I think it's pretty similar to us with, with stucco. I've always wondered that. What, what's the difference? When do you decide what's the best outer exterior material to use? Siding, brick, uh, stucco, does it really have to do with the climate of where you are? The climate does play a role. I mean, if you're in, um, you know, on the coast, um, you know, you're not, you're definitely not going to want, um, you know, a wood-based product you know there's so much moisture and, and and things like that the air and rot um so there's there's that so the products are getting better and it's, it's so crazy because like if they're installed right and maintained you can make most of these products work in any climate um but some are more forgiving so like for example example, I know that uh, there's this PVC siding. It's called Select. It's a cellular PVC siding. It's like, um, you know, they make PVC pipe. I mean, you can bury it. You can stick it under water. It's not going to damage it whatsoever. That is really hot on the, the coast, you know, because of the salt and the, and the water and the moist humidity and moisture and all that stuff. It works great. Um, it's starting to break its way here because, you know, we have some of those same things, but not as much as on the coast. So the, the climate definitely plays a role, but we, a lot of design is really even more, um, I think, becoming more important because you can make any of those. I mean, we do a lot of stone and stucco here as well. Um, you can make any of those products work in the right climate if they're installed properly. Um, 
and, and I love that because I think that makes a lot of sense on why people choose personally, preferably one versus the other. What about storm protection? What do you do on the exterior to protect yourself there? Because in the Midwest where I grew up and where you are, it was all uh, tornadoes, right? And now it's hurricanes mm-hmm. down here where I have Florida. It's like, I can't get away. Wind just it's follows right. me, man. <laughs> go. Right. But, you know, if somebody th- storm comes through, knocks out my home office, it's a real big problem for me. So what kind of things can I do to protect my home? Yeah, so, you know, when, the first thing that I think of when you talk about that here uh, in, in the Midwest is, again, the tornadoes, and with that comes a lot of hail damage. So we sell a, um, it's called Malarkey, is the manufacturer roofing shingle, and it's, a, it's basically a SBS, which is kind of like a rubberized material, and so it's impact resistant. So they basically test this, these shingles they shoot golf balls at them at like hundred miles an hour and they don't damage. So they're, they're really great. Um, I want that job. Right. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so that is a product that we use for hail damage. Um, that, and then that's the other thing on this, on the exterior of your home, the siding, you know, that's why we're getting away from the vinyl sidings that, you know, just damage super, super easy. Um, and going with like a hardboard siding, like, I mean, fiber cement, I mean, it's basically concrete board, um, you know, or, the OSB, which is like plywood almost. Um, and so those are those, those hold up really well to larger hill. And so I think that's, you know, in the windows, you know, getting away from vinyl and going with like a fiberglass, uh, something like that, that, that those are things that you can do that would really set you up for even take a major, major storm to cause any damage. When it comes from working from home, especially in windows, and you talked about this earlier, how do you know when your windows need to be replaced? And what kind of options do you have there? Because, man, I see I'm in some residences of my friends in Tampa in downtown, and you can't hear a thing behind their windows. And it's astonishing to me the advancements in technology there. So how do you know when you need new windows and what kind of window when it's really important that you have quiet? Because like these long guys come in and I'm doing podcasts and live streams right right here and it completely messes me up and I got to explain what's happening every single time. So is there an alternative here of windows that I should be looking at that gives me an extra layer of of quiet than normal windows? Yeah, so to answer your first question about when's the best time to replace a window, you're going to look for two telltale signs. One is most common is the old wood windows and they start to rot out usually on the exterior the the frame starts to rot because you know if you're not keeping it painted and cocked and, and doing upkeep it eventually starts to rot out and that's going to be uh when it's time to replace that window the other thing that you will notice sometimes is on like a double pane window um it the seal gets broken and so they're on gas between the panes will uh, start to escape and then you, it'll start to like fog up in between the panes and, and then you notice it's time to do something there as well. So w- to, then to answer your next question about the uh, the noise, yeah, triple pane windows are great. Um, you know, they're a little bit thicker. Um, they act another barrier there for the sound and that's a great option um, for, for noise canceling as well. Interesting. What about knowing, and you, you gave some some signs of not maintaining and and what you should do what are some other things that we should be doing for general maintenance to help us avoid costly repairs the biggest thing is to you know if you've got wood windows um, or wood siding uh, is keeping it cocked and painted Um, you know so you want to go around and, and kind of just look at the the around the windows and see if the caulk is cracked um, where moisture could get in, um, see if you're seeing any signs of damage, um, things like that. And it seems on the, on the siding where the siding meets, you want to make sure all that's cocked and flash and all that. Um, and so you just kind of do a, a, an inspection, you know, at least every couple of years, you get out there and just take a walk around and take a look. I could make note and see if there's anything that needs to be uh, touched up. Um, but you know, at least every, if you're painting your house, you keep it painted. I mean, it, it needs to be done probably about every, you know, seven, eight years. And, you know, quite frankly, most people are waiting 10 to 12 to 15. And that's where the problem runs to is they're just waiting too long to, to re and paint. What problem does that create? If you, if you do go 15 years versus the five for painting a house, what, what, what well, the- because w- 
most of the time you're you're reseal you're caulking when you paint and so and the paint starts to wear off and so the paint is what's protecting that wood from the elements from the freezing and thawing and, the, and all the moisture i mean moisture is the enemy right and so that's the that's the whole thing is we're, we're everything that we do is basically to manage moisture and keep it away from you know rotting out our house and so paint is a big part of that and if you put a coat of paint on on a wood then you know it's keeping the moisture away from it and it's not going to rot out whereas if that paint starts to peel or crack or you know it starts to fade away um that 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 the, opens the door for moisture to get in and same with caulking around seams and windows and all that stuff uh, most people aren't doing that until they're repainting and so that's why so when you go to your extend that life when you wait that that gap that extra five years that you're waiting is when the damage is happening you know that's when you know you've got one or two windows that some moisture is getting in around it and it's getting back behind the siding and it's starting to rot it out and maybe run your window frame and you know you don't notice it but uh you know after a few years it starts to rear its head what about roof leaks that's another thing i think people don't do as often as they should when should roofs be replaced what happens if you don't replace it on time as well? Because I, I think that could be pretty catastrophic to a house, especially if you're running a business from home. So how yeah. do these things need to be replaced? What's going wrong if we don't replace them when we're supposed to? So the great thing about roofing is that most roofs are designed to last a minimum of 25 years. Okay, so you shouldn't be replacing your unless you get a hailstorm or something. But what happens is you've got these these pipes that come out of your roof, like the uh, pipe from the fa vent fans in the in the bathroom, or uh, just a heat heating exhaust fan uh, pipes that come out. And so what they do is they they put a rubber gasket around pipe, and then they roof around it. And what happens is the sun will destroy that rubber gasket after about six years and so that's why most guys give a five-year warranty right <laughs> they, they know that year number six is gonna start having problems so if you just simply every five years um have a, a, roof, a roofing company come out and just say i need to do an inspection and they just basically reseal those those pipes and do a little touch up things like that um spend a couple hundred bucks it should last you you know the life of you know that you live there um, most people are saying more than 30 years. So it's pretty easy if you just do those little things, but if you don't, then water gets in around that little pipe and you start to get a, see a stain on the ceiling and, and you know, it starts to become a problem. Yeah. Well, well, and when that happens, why is it so important that you immediately fix those roof leaks? Well, because, you know, a very inexpensive, uh, you know, fix turns into a very expensive fix as it creates more damage you know as more and more water gets in you have to understand by the time you're seeing it on the ceiling a stain on the ceiling that water is dripped in it's gone through the insulation and it's starting to get to the sheetrock and it's starting you know it's been going on for a while and so the more you let it go i mean then eventually if it continues to go that path the ceiling will fall in i mean you know it's like it's however the longer you let it go the worse and more expensive it gets so that's why whenever you see the first sign of of a problem you want to jump on as quick as you can because at that point it's the least amount it's going to cost to fix it what are some other things that we should be paying attention to especially when it comes to home exterior to make sure we can make our home last longer to create more efficiency and just, you know, create a, a dependable place to not only live, but a lot of us now uh, be able to work as well. Yeah, I think the one thing that um, gets overlooked a lot is gutters. And so again, we're talking about water is the enemy and we're trying to manage all the water that comes off of your roof and get it you know, away from the house, away from the foundation. We don't have foundation problems. We don't want to have erosion. We don't want to have our soffits and fascia start to rot out. So uh, a big part of that is keeping the, the gutters free of debris, clean and free of debris. And nobody likes to get up and clean their gutters. Um, it's a pain. You got to move the ladders, dangerous. Um, and it's a problem. So what happens if you, if you're in an area where you, you, you've get leaves and debris falls on your roof and gets in your gutters you need to have gutter protection you need to have gutter screens that can filter out all of that stuff and let the water in and keep the debris out and that solves a lot of problems because if those gutters get clogged they fill up the water either runs behind the gutter and that gets into your soffit and fascia and will rot it out and become very expensive or it can run over the gutter and then water can erode away the, the around the foundation of your house and you can start to have basement leaks and which i don't Florida, you probably don't have the basements, but around here we do. 
and uh, it can be costly and very expensive. Where, um, where can we go to learn more uh, about you, what, learn more about what we can do to protect ourselves, and then have you guys even come out, do an inspection, especially from the local area, um, yeah. to see what needs to be done to make sure that we have the, the best environment? What, what's the next step? So visit our website. It's, it's um, www.smartextpros.com. And the blog, we were constantly updating that on a weekly or biweekly basis with just tips on basically everything we just talked about, you know, basically how to uh, maintain your home, um, you know, everything from the roofing, the siding, windows, gutters, all of those things. Um, and so that's really the best place is just to go on our website and um, check that out. I post those same blogs on, um, you know, our LinkedIn, which is just Steve Glaze at, at LinkedIn. And, um, but the website is, would be the hub. That's where huh. everybody goes and we put all Steven, thanks for coming on with us today. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Ty. All right. So look, if, by watching in this list of this, you, you and I both know that there's a good chance you're working from home now. A lot of us are. And, you know, an important part of being able to work from home and living at home as well is make sure you're maintaining your home properly. The more you could do on the exterior, the better everything is, the better protection you have from storms and rain damage and the more efficient you're, you can run a business um, and your home life because you don't have these huge electric bills and all these other side effects of not having the right kind of siding or exterior treatments that you need. And we haven't even got into gutters and all the other things that you need to be doing. So to learn more, make sure you visit smartextpros.com. That's smartextpros.com. Ton of information on the website um, as well. As Stephen mentioned, they've got a great blog uh, that has a lot of insight and valuable tips as well. So thanks for tuning in today. Make sure you visit smartextpros.com.